All right, so today we're going to continue our series on the Gospel of Luke. And uh, from the Luke chapter 12, verses 22 to 34, which I've entitled, Don't Worry, Seek God. Now, many of us have many, many worries. Right? In 2023, a survey that was done among Singaporeans and uh, what is their top health concerns? Right? What is our top health concerns? Right? Usually, I think it would be cancer, but that was not the case. Cancer was number two. Number one was mental health. 46% of Singaporeans say that mental health is the biggest health concern at the moment, more than cancer and stress. And I think that's true because of COVID, right? Because we, were, we went through a period of isolation. We went through a period of darkness. We went through a period of difficulties when we ourselves feared the worst about what the world is going to come into, right? Is this the end of the world, right? Is this going to be the end of us? That our population will be decimated, our families will be decimated by this terrible COVID-19. But we thank God that He has seen us through, not just Singapore, but the rest of the world. In 2022, another study showed that poor mental health <clears throat> Uh, is a rising trend in Singapore. It affects about 17% of our population. And that is up from 13%, a jump of 4% in just two years. And this is a very uh, worrying trend, uh, especially among the young adults between 18 to 29 years old. 25% of them showed symptoms of poor mental health. And also among the youth, 16% have already exhibited manifested symptoms of anxiety or depression. So this is quite a serious problem about mental health. And it's not something that just affects the poor people, right? People who are just worried about their jobs, or costs, rising costs of living, even the wealthiest people in Singapore, compared to the wealthy people in our neighbouring countries in Asia, 26% of Singapore high net worth individuals only 26% are satisfied with their work-life balance. Compared to 72% in Thailand, 64% in Philippines, and 49% in Japan. So what's wrong? What's wrong with the work-life balance in Singapore? Well, many of them cited <clears throat> the main reasons for their discontent is the long working hours. How many of them, how many of you say that that's true? Long working hours is the cause of your discontent. Yeah. Only one. I think the rest of you oh, don't, don't dare to raise your hands, right? Don't worry, the camera is not trained on you. Your employer doesn't know, right? Okay. right. Long working hours, 45 hours. Actually, I thought 45 hours is not very long because I used to work much longer hours. Actually, now I work much longer hours. <laughs> right? But I'm not discontent, right? So there's something wrong somewhere, right? Even for Christians, even if you work, work longer hours, it's not the matter of how long right, it's your working hours. At the end of the day, it's your attitude, right? your attitude towards the work that you do. Uh, is if you know that God is calling you to do the work, right? and your work is meaningful and is a way for you to serve God, then you will not feel discontent. You will feel joyful, and every day you will look forward to work. What are Singaporeans most unhappy about? Our newly minted Prime Minister, Lawrence Wong, was asked about this in a CNA interview and he said, from his interaction with Singaporeans, the biggest, the top three worries that were surfaced to him, number one, the rising cost of groceries, mainly food and everyday uh, items. Number two, rising housing prices. And number three, rising COE. <laughs> okay. So these are the top concerns that many Singaporeans are worried about. You know what? Things have not changed. 2,000 years ago, people were also like that. Although they didn't have COE, nah, but they were also concerned about food and drink and about their clothing, about the rising cost of living, about not having enough to feed their families, themselves, and the future, the uncertainty of the future. Nothing has really changed. And that's the passage that we just read. 
right? And there will be three questions that we want to ask ourselves through the passage that we have read, just read today. Number one, what are your worries? Right? Is it food, health, relationships, work? Number two, who is your God? Is it God or yourself? Because if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, really, your God is yourself. You just live your life according to what you want, right? And thirdly, where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? Is it on earth or is it in heaven? So we're going to answer these three questions as we go through the passage and ask yourself those questions, honestly. Number one, what are your worries? Verse 22 and 23. Let's read these two verses together. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. His disciples, right? Christians. These are the ones who are believe in Christ. But they too are worried about food. And Jesus has to assure them, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat. Don't be overly concerned, worried, anxious, obsessed with what you eat. Or whether you have enough to eat. Neither for the body what you shall put on, the clothes. Because the life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Isn't it surprising, even in Singapore, when we have no shortage of food? We have food paradise, right? And food actually is relatively cheap in Singapore compared to many countries because we have hawker centres, right? We have access to cheap and good variety of food of all kinds of cuisines in Singapore that you don't find very often in many countries. And yet, Singaporeans are still concerned about food. The rising costs of living, rising costs of hawker food, and it's something that we are still worried about, the basic needs of food, clothing, housing, that Jesus says life is more than food. Life is more than about the physical things that you do every day. And this is a question, this is the question that I want all of us to think about. Right? If you look at your life the past week, in the life in the past week, right? If you look at every day, what you do, right? What you are worried about, okay? And you look at the previous week and the previous month, the previous quarter, the previous year. Is it the same pattern over and over again? Are you worried about the same things? And one day, when we see Jesus face to face, imagine God is going to play back your video of your life before you. Okay? Video of your life huh? before you. Okay? This is your life. Every day you're worried about this, 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 this. Right? Every day, all that you're concerned about in this world is this, 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 this. What is it? you're concerned about. Would you be proud to show your video to God? Or would you be ashamed? <clears throat> That's the question here. Your life is more than just about food. It's not about the physical things in this world. As Christians, live above the physical things. Right? Jesus is always asking about our life. What is your life? How is your life? How are you spending your time? What are you worried about? What are you anxious about? What is your greatest concern? Is it just about food, clothing, partying, my friends, my family? What about God? One day you're going to see God face to face and God is going to ask you, what have you done for me? What have you done for Jesus? What kind of ministries have you served in Cornerstone Church? Can you, can you, Honestly say with all your heart, face to face to Jesus, that Lord, I have served you with all my heart. Can you do that? If you cannot, then I, I suggest today you have to change. 
Today, you have to look at your life, your video, right? Remember, huh? your video. Take a video of your life. I know a lot of you like to take videos. Huh? I always go to Lucky Plaza, a lot of these people are dancing and taking the videos and posting on TikTok and all that. They want to be famous. Uh, go viral overnight. Right? Yeah, you have a lot of videos to watch in heaven. Right? God is going to watch a video. Will you be proud of your video? That's the question that I have for you. What are your worries? What are you concerned about? Are they valid worries and anxieties? Or like what Jesus says, and Jesus is going to tell us, Consider the ravens, verse 24, For they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. Jesus gave a common example, a very insignificant bird. In the wild, in nature, considered a pest, but they're always around, where people are around. Right? You see these crows right, in hawker centres, they're always swooping in on the food. They're always around where there is food. They don't worry about not having enough food. They always know where to find the food, right? Even in the wild, in the time of Jesus, the ravens, they know where to find food. They don't sow nor reap. They're not farmers. They don't have a harvest to worry about. It is God who sows and God harvests and they will reap and they will, or rather they will get the food provided by God. Verse 24 goes on to say, And God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? The birds don't worry about food because God provides ample food. <clears throat> and how much more? How much more will God provide for you? And He will never forsake His righteous people, His children, Christians. You are the apple of God's eye. You are the favourite people of God. And you will be taken care by God. Psalm, Psalm 37 verse 25 says, I have been young and now I am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. In other words, don't have to worry that you don't have enough to eat. Don't have to worry that your children won't have enough to eat because God will take care of you. God will provide for you and God will see to it that you will have enough if you will only trust Him. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that you stay at home, be lazy and don't do any work and then you expect money to come in, you know, and that you have money to provide for yourself and your family. No. God calls us to work hard, to make a living, an honest living, and then trust God that He will provide for our daily needs. But God will take care of us. God will never abandon us. He will never forsake the righteous. Actually, our problem is not starvation, right? Our problem is overweight. Eh? 30% of Singaporeans are overweight. 10% of us are obese. We eat too much, right? right. Uh, starvation is the least problem here, right? It's not, not enough to eat. We have to control what we eat. We have to control our diet, right? But Jesus is also saying, he's not saying about starvation or being overweight or obese. He's saying, don't be overly concerned about physical things, or about what you eat, about food. Don't be obsessed. So, to be obsessed with the diet is also not right. Because that's not the kind of obsession God wants us to have. It's an unhealthy obsession. Because life is more than just about food. What is life about? Life is about our relationship with God. Right? The spiritual realm. Rise above the physical realm. We're talking about a spiritual kingdom, about our relationship with God. Yes, every day we have to go into the world, we have to fight battles, we have to work hard, we have to earn a living. It's not easy to do that. I don't dismiss all of that. Right? We all have to work hard, make an honest living. We have to work long hours and there are difficult challenges that we have to face every day. But we know that God is with us. And more importantly, our jobs, our workplace, and our homes, our communities are places where we can serve God. That we can be a witness for God. That others can see Jesus in us through our interactions with them, through our love for them, our care for people around us. That we can show the love of Jesus through our kind words, 
through our interaction and our good relationships with people around us, that they too know that Jesus loves them through our love and our care for them. All right? So that's really what Jesus is talking about. Verse 25, And which of you, let's read these two verses together, And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? In other words, so what you are anxious? So what if you are worrying? You keep worrying and worrying and worrying. By worrying, can you add one cubit, which is one and a half feet, 18 inches, to your height? Some of us think that, oh, I'm very short. I want to be taller. I want to be taller like that model, you know, slim and tall, you know, then I'll be pretty. And then when I'm pretty, then I will get a good husband, right? And when I'm a good husband who is rich, then I will be happy for the rest of my life. Right? We think like, oh, this is, this is the important part of life. And Jesus says, life is not about the physical, right? Even if you worry about your height, you're not going to be, you grow one and a half feet taller. So what's the point? Right? If you cannot even do that, which is least, why take you thought for the rest? A lot of your worries is of no use. Right? In fact, 99% of your worries will never come to pass. 99% of your fears will never come to pass. Right? It's not to say that you should not plan for the future. It's not to say that we should not plan for the rainy day, plan for a time of sickness, a time when you need money and you need to save up money for the rainy day. Right? You should do that. But you should not be overly anxious or worried about the future, about your health, about the food that you eat, about your diet, about being overweight, about being obese, about your jobs. Will I ever get a job? Or about your relationships, will I ever get married? Or will my marriage ever be good? Will we ever stop quarreling with our spouses? Or will my children be obedient? Yes, we should pray for these things. We should pray and ask God to help us. And we will talk about how to deal with our problems the way God wants us to. Verse 27, let's read this. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Consider the lilies in the field. They're so pretty. They toil not, they don't have to work very hard. Yes, they have to grow through the soil, right? They shoot out from the soil. They, spin, they don't have to spin yarn to make clothes. They're so pretty that even King Solomon, the richest man in the whole United Kingdom of Judah and Israel, King Solomon, with all his money, he was not dressed. His dress is not as nice as the flowers, the lilies of the field. And it's true. If you look at the beauty of nature, the beauty of the flowers. Human beings, we are just imitating. We are just imitating nature, the beauty of nature. Whether it be the paintings, the sculptures, right? Or the embroidery or crochet. Whatever we do, we are just imitating the beauty of nature. And it is God who provides for the lilies. It is God who clothes the lilies with beautiful clothing. And therefore, there's no need for us to worry about clothes. The lilies don't worry about the appearance, and neither should we, because it is God who gave us the appearance. Now, some of you are going to object to this, because you say that I wake up early in the morning, I see myself in the mirror, and I don't like this look. <laughs> well, I say it to you, it is God who has created you. If you say that, it's actually a sin, because... God says, I made you. So if you are criticizing your looks, you are criticizing God, the designer who has created you. And God created all of us unique, with unique looks, different looks. And we are all beautiful. 
attractive, handsome in the sight of God. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Right? What is the standard of beauty that Hollywood or the media or TikTok is putting on us? That's the standard of the world, of Satan. You don't have to agree to that, right? The Bible tells us that every one of us is made in the image of God, and that's beauty. And it's not just the physical appearance is not important, not as important as your heart, your heart, the spiritual, your soul. That is more important. That's what God looks at. God doesn't look at your outward appearance, but God looks at your heart. Your heart. Is your heart growing with Christ? Is your heart becoming more and more like Jesus? Is your heart becoming more loving and kind, compassionate and merciful? Is your heart thinking like Jesus? That's the question here. Why worry when you can trust God? The birds in the air don't worry about food because God will provide for them. The lilies of the field don't worry about their appearance because God gives them the most beautiful garments. And so how do I overcome worry? Jesus says in verse 28, let's read this. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? What is Jesus saying here? Jesus is saying that if God will even take care of the grass, the lilies of the field, which are really not worth very much, or even the crows, the birds of the air, they're very insignificant creatures. But you, made in the image of God, children of God, you are of much greater value than all these creatures that God has made. Don't you think that God will take care of you? If God takes care of the grass and the lilies and the ravens, how much more will God take care of you? Because you are His children. We are His children. We who are called Christians, we who have believed in Jesus, followers, disciples of Jesus, God will take good care of us. Right? So what do we need? We need faith. We need to trust God. Trust is the key. Right? And faith is the key. We need to believe that God is good. We need to believe that God is good to me. Now, that's where the problem is, right? That's the same problem with Eve in the Garden of Eden. Eve thought that God is not good to me. God wanted to deprive me of the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And therefore, God is not good to me. That's a lie of Satan. And that's the lie that many of us believe. God is no good to me. Uh, God didn't give me straight A's in my exams compared to my friend. God didn't give me this job that I like. My friend got it. God didn't give me this looks that I want. Another person had it. God is not good to me. See, those are the lines of Satan. Every time those lines come into our minds, what must you do? Reject them, right? Remember, go back to your faith, to the Bible. Trust God. God is good to me always. There is never a time when God is not good. There is never a time, a moment or a second in your life when God is not loving you and being gracious to you and being compassionate and merciful to you. God always loves you. And God will take care of you. Trust Him. Trust God, right? The simple trust in God is the key. Have your faith increase from the little faith that you have. Increase your faith. How can you increase your faith? Study the Word of God. Pray without ceasing. Study the Word. And that's why in our church, we encourage all of us to come together to study. And in October, we will start the study of Genesis. Right? The book will go to print very soon. Right? Thank God, many of you have prayed for me. I managed to finish writing the book. <laughs> And we will enjoy the study of Genesis. And we will learn many precious lessons. How the Old Testament saints had very little faith, just like you and me. They made mistakes. They sinned. They didn't trust God. And then they learned the hard way. And then finally, their faith grew as they trusted God more and more. And we must do the same thing. Come together to study the Word. And then our faith in God will grow. And we must counsel ourselves. We must trust God and then we must counsel ourselves. Counsel ourselves means that we must talk to ourselves. 
and teach ourselves the Word of God, the truth from the Word of God. So let's read verses 29 and 30. And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye doubt of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. In other words, you know, you are better than the people of the world, aren't you? You are the children of the Most High God. You have been enlightened with the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, with the truth of the Word of God. You know the truth. You know the true God. And then why are you still living like the rest of the world? Why are you still worried about food and drink? Don't you think that God will provide for you? He has said that He will provide for you. Do you trust God? Do you think that God is a liar? No. God is a God of truth. Whatever He says will be fulfilled. Whatever He has promised will be done in accordance to His good timing. And we trust Him. All right? So you must counsel yourself that God will provide for me. You must talk to yourself. All right? Tell yourself that God knows what you need and God will provide for you. You just need to trust God. And don't worry. All right? I know it's easier said than done. Right? All of us worry every morning we wake up. Oh, yeah, I've got this to do, that to do. I've got this challenge, this problem, this difficulty. All right? This client to meet, difficult client, this difficult person who I need to work with. This difficult person in the home. This difficult relationship. Yes, we trust God. God knows what you need. Pray and ask God for help. And He will help you. And God can be trusted. We can rest in Jesus. All right, let's read this in Matthew eleven twenty eight. Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes, many of us are tired from your long hours of work, from the stressful work from the physical nature of your work. Come to Jesus and rest. Psalm 55 verse 22. Let's read. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Claim these promises. Cast your burdens upon the Lord. When you pray, cast your burdens upon the Lord. Lord, you know I have this burden. Lord, you know I have all these struggles and anxieties. Lord, would you not help me? Lord, would you not give me strength, give me faith to believe in you and your promises? Lord, I know you are God who can be trusted. Lord, help me to trust in you. Help me to go in your strength. Lord, you know I'm weak. I need your strength. Lord, I cast all my cares upon you, all my burdens upon you. Would you please help me? And then you cast all your cares on me and you walk away with your burdens lifted up from you. The problem with many of us is we cast our burdens and then we take back the burdens. <laughs> we take back the burdens with us. And then we say, oh, God, you never helped me. You keep worrying and worrying and worrying. Once you cast your burdens upon the Lord, leave it with the Lord. Lord will take care of it. God will take care of you and God will help you. And God will give you the strength and the wisdom to do your work. The first question we've asked, what are your worries? The worries reveal your lack of faith and trust in God. Secondly, who is your God? Verse 31 and 32, let's read this. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But rather, you see the contrast here? Don't be seeking the kingdom of this world, the physical things in this world. But seek the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom. You are better than the people in the world who do not know Jesus. You know Jesus. That you know that your life is more than just about meat and food and drink and clothing and house. Your life is about your relationship with God. Because when you die, you can't take away your house with you. You can't take away your business with you. You can't take away your clothes, no matter how expensive they are. You can't take away your food with you to heaven. You don't need all these things. God will provide far better in heaven. You leave all these things behind. So your life is really more about your relationship with God. So spend time on the important things. The important things is to seek the kingdom of God. And all the things that you need, God knows that you need. He will provide for you. 
Fear not, little flock. Don't be worried. Don't be anxious. Don't be afraid. Little flock. We're like this little sheep. You know, little sheep are always very, very easily afraid by little things, right? Very timid. And we are like that. We can be easily frightened by the smallest thing. Oh, the doctor said he wants to see me. Is it something sinister? Is it cancer? Is it this? Is it that? So we start worrying. We start imagining things, right? Why worry? Just go and see the doctor. It may be nothing, right? Right? Whatever it is, God will take care of me, right? God will take care of me. Seek the kingdom of God. What does it mean by seeking the kingdom of God? In other words, when you are living your life on earth, you are not building your own kingdom of self, your kingdom of your own ambition, your own empire of the Lee empire. I'm not building my Lee empire in this world, right? I'm nobody. I don't need to build an empire. I have Christ. I'm here to build Christ's kingdom. I'm here to build the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom. And that's the same for every child of God. Your ambition and your goal should be to build the kingdom of Christ so that through your life every day, you're adding one more brick in the building of God's kingdom. You're adding more cement. You're building a stronger building for the kingdom of God. And how do we do that? Through our daily lives, through our daily conversations, through our daily thoughts and how we live our lives. If you are always worried and anxious about things, you're not building the kingdom of God. You're building your own kingdom. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that. You're not trusting God, that God will take care of you. You should be saying, God, I know you take care of all my food and my clothing and my housing, right? I don't need to worry about all these physical things. I just work hard. But Lord, I'm concerned about the spiritual lives of people around me. I'm concerned about the salvation of my loved ones. I'm concerned that they are going to hell if they do not know Jesus. Oh Lord, use me to love them. Use me to be instruments of blessing to those people around me so that they too can see the love of God through me and help me to build your kingdom because you have called me to be your servant. To build your kingdom, not to build my own kingdom. Jesus says, seek the kingdom of God, right? And that's what God wants us to do, right? Are you building the kingdom of yourself for yourself to make a name for yourself that the people at the Tower of Babel, they want to build this high tower to go to heaven, right? To make a name for themselves. And then God has to disrupt them, right? Because that's the wrong direction to go. And many of us are like that. We want to build a name for ourselves. We want the world to know that this person is important. Right? This person has done something great in his life, and I want to be remembered forever. Well, that is only going to come to naught. That is, going to come, that is only going to come to a disaster of your life. Because God is going to shatter your Tower of Babel. When you seek to build your own kingdom, it will come to grief. The only way you can live a godly life is to seek the kingdom of God, is to build the kingdom of God, trusting that God will provide for all that you need. And in another, in another, in another parallel passage similar to this, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it is added another phrase, right? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. All the things that you're worried about that you won't have, all these things will be provided for you. What do you do? Seek the kingdom of God. Build the kingdom of God. And seek His righteousness. In other words, that relates to our living. Are you living a righteous life? Are you living a godly life? Or are you tempted to follow the way of the world? Are you tempted to be like the non-Christians? who are living ungodly lives, who are living the life of lust, of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Are you living like the people of the world with no care about God, with no regard for the word of God? But you 
are different. You are made in the image of God. And you have been washed by the blood of Jesus. You have been given a new life, eternal life in Christ. You who have been enlightened with the gospel, you know far better. You know that you have a meaningful life to live. That you can do something for Jesus every day and out of the way. And that you can obey the word of God. You can be godly as God. He is holy. We can be holy as well. And God has given us the commandments, uh, not for us to obey legalistically like the Pharisees. Pharisees say, oh, if I do all these things, then I'll be saved. No. The Ten Commandments and the commandments of Jesus are not given for us to be legalistic. It's not a way of salvation, but they are a way of life. It is to remind us this is the character of God. This is how God wants us to live. He wants us to be like Him, righteously. In loving God with all our hearts, strength and might, the first four commandments. And the next, four, next six commandments, to love the neighbour as yourself. Right? Relates to our relationship with our neighbours. Don't steal. Don't take things that don't belong to you. Don't cover things that belong to your neighbour. Do not kill. Do not lie. Right? Honour your father and your mother relationship right with the people around loving your neighbor every day that is the righteousness that god wants us to seek every day of our life that is the will of god for us we are to seek the kingdom of god build his kingdom to tell others about jesus and at the same time live out live out the godly life every day of our lives so that others can also see that we are living a godly life like Jesus. If God is your God, then you should seek to do His will, His righteous will. Think righteously. In other words, every day think about be holy as God is holy. Right? And how can I be holy? Obey His commandments. If you love God, you will obey God's commandments. And then you will live holy lives, live righteously. Seek the righteousness of God. Now finally, the third question we're going to ask, where is your treasure? Verse 33, let's read this together. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupteth. Is Jesus saying that we should sell all our properties, give all our money to charity and back on the streets? No, certainly not. Jesus is making a contrast here. Is your God is your treasure, the money and the physical possessions that you have. The number of assets that you can buy. Is that your treasure? Or is your treasure somewhere else? The spiritual treasure. Is your, spir is your treasure a physical treasure? Or is your treasure a spiritual treasure? Remember, Jesus is always talking about the spiritual kingdom of God versus the physical. Because the world is always talking about the physical. But Jesus is always pointing us to the reality of the spiritual kingdom. That there is a real spiritual kingdom. The kingdom of heaven. That we have treasure in heaven. That one day, one day, we will see Jesus face to face. That one day we will be going to heaven. We who have belonged, who, who, who trusted in Jesus. We who belong to the kingdom of heaven. We will be forever with the Lord and we will receive treasures. We will receive our rewards that Jesus will give to each and every one of us. A treasure is something that you prize most. What is that thing that you prize most? Is your treasure on earth or is your treasure in heaven? If you store up your treasures on earth, as I mentioned earlier on, you can't take it away with you when you die. And all these treasures will rust. right? Even the uh, recent Olympic gold medals uh, from the Paris Olympics, they rusted after a few weeks, tarnished already. Right? Even these gold medals that these Olympians worked so hard for, they will tarnish. Whatever we have on earth will rust and they will fade away. And we cannot take them away with us when we die. Is your treasure on earth or in heaven far more important is that we must build our treasures in heaven, in the kingdom of heaven. 
is your treasure the gospel of Jesus Christ? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, in the clay jars. What do they keep in the clay jars? The scriptures, the scrolls of scriptures in the clay jars. The, the treasure, which is the gospel, the word of God. We have the word of God. That should be our treasure that every day we have with us. Every day we can read the Bible. Every day we have the treasure of the wisdom of God to guide us, to help us to walk righteously, to live righteously, to have wisdom, to navigate the challenges that we face every day in life, to go through the trials of life. We have this treasure that we already have with us, the Word of God. And finally, our treasure is also in Christ. Verse 34, Jesus says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What is in your heart? For believers, when we receive Christ, the Holy Spirit lives with us. And the Holy Spirit teaches us the Word of God, to understand the Word of God, to lead us into all truth. And the Holy Spirit leads us to Christ, to understand the words of Christ and the commandments of Christ. So, question, is your heart full of worries or is your heart full of Christ? Is Christ filling your heart? If Christ is filling your heart, then every day you can be joyful. Every day when you wake up, Lord, I want to serve you today. I want to love others as you have loved me. Help me to love you and to love my neighbor as myself. Help me to go into the world to serve you, to be your witness, to tell others about the good news of salvation. Help me not to worry about the problems that I have because I know that you will take good care of me and that you will provide for me. Are you building the kingdom of self or the kingdom of God? Is your treasure on earth in the kingdom of self, in the kingdom of this world? Or is your treasure, the spiritual treasure, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God? What do you prize most? Is Christ your treasure? Is God on the throne of your heart? That really is the cross. Because if God is not on the throne in your heart, if God is not controlling what you say, if God is, controlling, is not controlling what you think every day, if God is not controlling your decisions in life, then you'll be thinking wrongly. You're thinking sinfully. You're, you're thinking lies of Satan. And then your life will not be righteous. You will not be living a godly life. And that is why you will have problems. You will be anxious, you will be sad, you will, you will be struggling with all your worries because your heart is not controlled by Jesus. God is not on the throne. And so we must submit to God. That's, that is necessary. The problem with many of us is that we struggle to submit to God. We say, God, I want to control my life. My life must be like that. When I grow up, I imagine my life is like that. That's my dream. That's my ambition. My life must be like that. God, I, I must have this. Right? If I don't have this, I will not be happy. Well, you're struggling with God. You're not submitting to the will of God. Today, submit to the will of God. Lord, whatever happens, I know that you are good. Lord, whatever happens in my life, even if I don't achieve this dream, it's okay because your will is better than my dream. Your will is the best for me and you know best you know what is good for me, and I will trust you. I have faith in you. I know that you are a great God. You are a loving God, and you will take care of me. Right? So submit to the will of God. Well, we thank God for the true treasure that we already have in Christ, and I plead with some who have not trusted in Jesus that you will come unto Jesus, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, because Jesus will give you rest true rest. When you are anxious, when you are worried, recite this verse. Memorize this verse. Remind yourself that you can rest in Jesus. You don't have to take all your burdens with you. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. Alright? So finally, to sum up, don't worry. Right? Because your worries show that you do not trust the provision of God. Counsel yourself to rest in him. 
cast your burdens upon the Lord. Use the means of grace of prayer, of the reading of God's word, to remind yourself of the promises of God and the truth about God and the truth about you, your position in life. The problem with many of us is that we think very lowly of ourselves. We think that, oh, I'm a nobody. It's true that we are nobodies. But we are now the children of the Most High God. You are somebody in the kingdom of God. Right? You are part of the royal family of God. You have been elevated to be brothers and sisters of Christ, of Jesus Christ. Right? You are in the family of God, and God loves you. Amen? Amen. When God loves you, God provides for you. You don't need to worry. Right? So don't think that, you know, God is not thinking about me. God doesn't care about me. That's not true. That's the lie of Satan. Remember who is your God, that you are in God's kingdom. You who have believed in Jesus, you are building the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom. Live above the circumstances in this world. Live above the physical problems in this world. And live above your ambitions in this world. Because the only good ambition that you should have is the spiritual ambition. I want to be like Jesus. I want to serve God every day of my life. I want to love God with all my heart, strength and mind. And I want to love my neighbor as myself. I want to live out the righteousness of God. That others who see me can see the love of God, the holiness of God in my life. And they will be drawn to the light of the world. And that is Jesus. And finally, where is my treasure? Is my treasure on earth? Or it's my treasure in heaven. Right? Think about your video. Remember, we talk about the video of your life. You play your video of your life. Where is your treasure? From what you are worried about every day, that's where your treasure is. That's where your heart is. If Jesus is not on the throne of your heart, your treasure will always be about the world, about the physical things of this world. But if you know that your treasure is Christ and the gospel of Christ, and your treasure is in heaven, then you will know how to live your life every day. What are the key lessons? If you are worried about your material needs, it betrays a lack of trust in your heavenly Father. God knows and cares about our needs and He's able to supply them. God's kingship must be our first concern, that He must be the king of our lives, that we must put God first, and we put him first, we seek his righteousness, we are storing up treasures in heaven. And on our church, 11th anniversary, let us put God first, seek his kingdom and his righteousness, share the gospel, find opportunities to love others around us, submit to the will of God. Don't be too worried about the things that we need, knowing that God will provide for all of us. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for your word that is truth. Forgive us for many times when we have been trying to build our own kingdom on earth, that we are not building your kingdom. Forgive us for many times that we are living like the people of the world, more concerned about what we eat, where we live, the clothes that we wear, than your instructions for us that we ought to live righteously, that we ought to seek the kingdom of God, to do your will in our lives, that we ought to love you with all our heart, strength and might, and to love our neighbour as ourselves. Oh Lord, forgive us. May you help us to enthrone Christ in our hearts, that Christ may be our greatest treasure in our hearts, that every day we will be guided by what Jesus tells us, then as the children have sung just now, I have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. Oh Lord, help us that we may follow Jesus, submit to Jesus, that we may seek the treasures in heaven. Oh Lord, and we look forward to that glorious day when you will reward us. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.